watching Medicine. It is on Amazon Prime or Prime Video. If any of you have that, you can just watch it there. Uh, if you don't, you can still watch it, but you have to pay for it. Uh, any questions about the, the writing of it? We can ask Brandon. Or it, I turned around and talked to Brandon there during because that line about why doesn't anybody ever flush? Neither of us wrote that line. That, that was actually ad libbed. <laughs> Jeff, you heard that line over and over as she was. Doctor's disgusting. She, she had, we left it there. <laughs> What's your question? Well, we had a um, situation in my family long term that had to take care of some of the mother and dad's conditions that contributed to the opioids. And, you know, it was intense. So when I watched it, I thought, oh, someone's finally doing a series or something that actually has been. So Kelly, for those who couldn't hear, she was commenting on actually bringing out the very real issue of opioid addiction and the delicate area that it is right now in medicine with, well, in fact, let's see, this is the 29th, October 1st in California, opioid prescriptions are going to be changed drastically because of a new state law that's going to affect you know, Monday, and that requires any time a controlled substance, or at least a Schedule II, is written that uh, the doctor has to check on the Department of Justice's database that patient's prescribing information in the record for uh, controlled substances and document it, and also have a documented care plan that goes along with that prescription. And many practices are now having patients come in on a monthly basis, every single month they're being seen in person by the physician who's writing a prescription because of the opioid crisis that our country is in. We, we've been taught, in fact, when I was in residency and shortly after, we were taught that uh, pain, like a pain scale, is the fifth vital sign because there was such a huge push to treat pain because we don't want people to hurt. That's appropriate to not want people to hurt. The problem is there was also a push at the same time to be much freer with opioids, and now we know that patients who are treated with these opioids, as is said in the movie, they're much more likely to stay on the medicine and continue to hurt because of the way it affects the nerves. They actually hurt when a person with identical uh, pain, if they weren't treated with the opioids, they would not continue hurting later on, which is very hard to tell a person when they're hurting uh, and, and they're not getting the kind of relief that they want with other types of medicines that don't have that effect. It's a very hard thing to go through together. And of course, every single patient tells you that they don't have a problem with addiction, that they would know if they were addicted because they had a family member or something, that they are the exception, they have the legitimate pain, and it's awful that these other people are ruining it for people like them that have legitimate pain. Everybody says this. Everybody I sit across a room from uh, that comes in with pain is telling me the exact same thing, every single one. So they are all the exception, and that's why they are all prescribed opioids and why we have the situation now of people overdosing or not getting off of the pain medicine being addicted. So it's a difficult situation to get them off of. We were able to introduce that in humor, which, uh, thank, Kelly, thank you so much for saying what you did because uh, the thought that immediately comes to my mind is 
we kind of made a joke out of a very serious thing because of how we had the, the character. Sorry, sorry, Nana. That's who it was. And, and she did wish us um, well here at the uh, film festival when I told her that was here. That's just one example. You point out the opioid. As the series goes, the plan was to introduce other topics that are very current in medicine from a primary care physician's perspective. And that's what I'm able to bring to the world through something like Madison Woman. So if you, if you liked it, please tell people to go to Amazon Prime and watch it. And uh, if they're really interested in what happens with it, have them uh, put their email address on the list at madisonwoman.com. And of course, spelling Madison Woman is always a bit of a challenge because of my my attempt at being clever at having about somebody named Madison who practices medicine and uh, coming up with a way of spelling both at once. Um, so forgive me for that if you ever <laughs> find it on, on Prime or, or look on the internet for madisonwoman.com. But uh, please do send people there if you think that this is something they, they'd like to see. Are there other questions about Madison Woman, the Madison Woman pilot? Kelly? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> You're around a lot, and I'm in that world. Yeah. So I love training in a That's just one of the things that we hope to bring to. Some of them weren't quite as serious as that, but other issues of what's going on in medicine. And, and actually, I, I intend to have it be a positive spin on it and hopeful, because we do have hopeful things, hopeful changes that I want to tell people about. Alicia? I noticed um, you also address a lot of the kind of nuances of having a physician's assistant and the respect that they do or don't get. And I really appreciate Thank you. that being a female and seeing yes. um, that role. So if there's anything you want to get out there to, in this format to people or how that might develop. Very um, much, yeah, showing who of it, because it's kind of an unknown still. Uh, people who thankfully have not had medical issues and have had to be in the health system, they might not be f familiar with what a physician assistant is and what they're qualified to do. And so this is to elevate the position of not just physician assistants, but physician assistants and nurse practitioners, both being advanced practice clinicians who practice medicine with a license and evaluate patients and examine them and prescribe treatments uh, and under the supervision of a physician, um, as she was in the show under our Dr. Adams and, and also Dr. Mayer, uh, just like we have in our real office. Thank you. Well, thank you. Oh, yes, Russell. Uh, as far as other medical issues, I, I really want to bring out, uh, well, one, one thought is very similar to the opioids, and that is inappropriate use of antibiotics, which actually is improving, but it's kind of the same story as this one, where somebody comes in uh, with not an understanding of the, of the medicine and the, 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 real, the real facts around what they think they know, uh, maybe based on limited experience with their own personal illness compared to, you know, what, what is going on in everybody and everybody's illness and what things can become and what they can be limited to. Um, changes in the way that we practice medicine, like people with chronic care or chronic conditions, managing them over time continuously with connection to the office by phone and getting a lot of care taken care of that way rather than having them come in little episodic appointments and doing things that really should be done over the phone with medical assistant instead of with the doctor. So the doctor and the patient when they're together can actually talk about what the concern is that the patient has at that time and get much better use of that limited time 
that doesn't need to be spent just you know ticking boxes on a computer program just to go through the plan when that can be done totally separate from that very valuable time in the office. And so Medicare actually has a program for that that I'm uh, working on more of a commercial project to make a video for to actually help doctors to integrate this new Medicare program. It saves Medicare. Well, I'll, I'll just give you the numbers. Uh, 18 months after the program being initiated, they save $74 per Medicare member per month with doctors actually getting paid $43 per month. So, you know, they're actually saving over 130 or somewhere around there. My math's not that great, but in that neighborhood, uh, per month, per Medicare member, uh, with this new program that we do where we manage chronic care outside of the office, outside of the appointment, everybody wins. Medicare pays less, the patients have, the reason that they're paying less is because there's fewer hospitalizations and skilled nursing facilities because instead things are being prevented and that's why they have to do these studies over months and months and months because that's where you see the win is keeping the bad thing from happening that results in somebody going to the emergency department and you know, having a heart attack or stroke or whatever it is or complications of their diabetes that cost lots of money down the road. So that's another thing I'm actually going to work on that outside of Madison Woman because it's a, such a timely thing and needs to be put out there for patients to benefit. I say Medicare because it's Medicare now that's doing it and that's what affects our practice the most because being in the community we are in Auburn, I'm trying to think, like 90% of the patients I see are Medicare age. So, and and that's, that's who goes to the doctor because when you're old you start to have things happen to your body. But other, other issues, um, the physician assistants, we got that. Um, Brandon, do you remember that list of things we had talked about early on? Uh, I've got a list. Of, uh, yeah, there, there is a list that exists of topics that come up and are, are, I think would be of interest and make good story points. Which I can get to. If, if, if plain Dr. Adams wanted to know those ahead of time before we get going. That's right. Other questions? I, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I work in a medical office also, and I have seen just in the past several years the difference between, you know, the doctors giving out the medication, the pain medication, and now the patients are they're so upset. And uh, we've had people cry on the phone and say, well, and should I commit suicide then? Oh then goodness. you won't have to deal with me. You know, that, that sort of thing. So it's really an epidemic, and and it's wonderful that you are presenting this um, because a lot of patients need to see that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Lopez was just talking about how she sees it in the office. She works in the medical office. People are in desperate situations when they're addicted to these medicines, and it puts them through a horrible experience to get them off of it. Uh, and we don't have good answers to that. That's the, the, the sad thing about it. We, we work on the other end of it, not getting them on in the first place. And an example of how that's done is in our office, when somebody gets a patient addicted to opiate medications, uh, they are responsible for where that goes. And so we don't inherit that responsibility from other offices by when patients call and they're on those medicines. We don't take that on. We say, if you're on those medicines, that needs to come from wherever it's coming from. We're, we're not continuing that. Uh, and it makes for a much better environment in our office. I understand that people have been very disappointed that we wouldn't take them as patients. And I think we've even had things written on our Facebook page uh, that you can't take down as the Facebook page owner. Uh, but it's, it's, it's worth it for the benefit of the patients that we have to have that policy. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Madison Moment.